Check, check, check. Hello, hello. Welcome to the SoCal Honda Soundstage at Amp Radio Pop-Up here at Circa LA. How's everybody feeling? So glad you can make it. Please give it up for Alessia Cara. Hi. This is awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, after last night, I think, was it just after your set, like around 819, we, we felt that earthquake. Did you feel it? No. I was like washing up. I was showering, changing my clothes. I had no idea. I was like, doo, doo, doo. and then I came <laughs> out and everybody was like, did you feel that? And I'm like, no. Maybe because I was under like backstage under like the big... You know, Did you guys feel it? I mean, with a raise of hands, I mean, I felt. Yeah, it kind of felt like a, a feel boat. It at all. <laughs> I did not feel it at all. Okay. I don't know. Well, it's a good reminder to get those those kits ready, your, your earthquake kits, and exactly. have those good to go. That, um, my bass was too loud. That's what it was. That's what I it caused, was. I caused an earthquake. Leslie Carr, <laughs> causing a ruckus in downtown LA. How has the tour been so far? I've uh, been on tour with Shawn Mendes. Um, yeah. yeah, it's selling out arenas. Tell us about your experience so far. It's been really awesome. We just finished doing Europe, so this is like the first couple of weeks of doing the US, and it was amazing. I mean, we got so spoiled in Europe because everywhere in Europe is awesome, but even in the US, like, it's just so much fun to tour with your friends and people that you enjoy being around, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Do you uh, bring a lot of family out? I saw your dad kind of stop by. Is there always yeah. someone from the family that's kind of here to help keep you, keep you grounded? Um, well, it's usually my dad that comes in and out. Uh, my mom's job, like with my mom's job, she can't really travel too much, but I'm gonna try to force my brother to come out and, and hang with me <laughs> for a bit. <laughs> with, with being on tour now with, with Shawn Mendes, do you do things differently when it's not your headlining tour? Um, did you wanna go into this tour a little differently as well? Um, definitely, I think, I mean, I tried to not put too much pressure on myself because every time I tour, I'm always like worried about how I'm gonna sound or like what's, you know how good the show was or if I miss a note I'm always like beating myself up so this year I was like whatever happens on stage just like do your best and I, I like try not to beat myself up or like put too much pressure on myself this time around um, and there's kind of a little bit of less pressure because I mean it's not my tour so it's kind of like right there's, there's a little bit less pressure because I'm like, okay. You can just kind of let Sean do that. And just I'll let him be stressed. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's amazing. He's you, so good. You know, being on tour now with Sean and kind of looking back, uh, I mean, you've been doing this for a little while now, but you're still very young. Uh, you're still uh, a whole, you know, uh, history they're going to make with music. But looking back, who was like one of the first acts that you opened for? And what was that like? Um, well, the only time, other time I've ever opened for somebody, um, it was Coldplay, yeah. So, <laughs> kind of an insane gig for the first time. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was like stadiums, and I'm like, what am I doing here? I, I like when they asked me, I was like, are you sure they got the right person? Like, I don't think there's any way that <laughs> I the right make sense there. But it was the best time of my life. <laughs> it was amazing. It's just crazy because I went from like playing little clubs and like bars and like little clubs of like 100 to 200 people to like playing stadiums for you know Coldplay. It was the craziest. It's insane. Time of my I mean, life. and looking back at that, how do you kind of uh, you start off as, you know, kind of a, a no-namer at first, but how do you get through that? What were kind of some of the struggles that you went through, and then how did you overcome that? Um, well, I think it's it's the same with everybody, you know, just starting out. You kind of have to work really hard to make a name for yourself and just keep going and get through all of the humps that kind of come with, you know, starting out, and there's going to be dips and, you know, and hard times and a lot of people that try to tell you who you are and tell you who you're not and you got to just kind of get through that and just keep your head down and just keep going and as long as you know who you are I think um, you can just I don't know keep going with a good mindset I guess yeah that's great advice we have some young singers here that want to yeah. sing yeah a couple sweet I'm going to make you guys <laughs> sing then for this set. you're going to have yeah. to sing yeah what <laughs> advice do you give to someone who's just starting out and wanting to you know make music a career um, well, I think the, the beauty of being an aspiring singer or anyone in the entertainment industry nowadays is the fact that we have so many resources that are free that a lot of people didn't have the luxury of having back in the day. So I would say just utilize all of those things. Utilize social media. Get out there. Like We're able now to connect with people directly, instantly, for free from us to the people and there's no middleman anymore. So I would say just use that, use social media, post. If you wanna sing, just like sing songs, do it for fun and post it and you know, people will see it and it gets to people, it really does. And I think we should utilize these awesome resources that we were given, you know? Great advice and now with the pains of growing, um, with this record, yeah. who has it, he's got the record. You know, tell us about- Are you guys lying? Did you actually get the record? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna test you after. What hey. was, where <laughs> were you when you were writing this record? 
Um, where was I? I was actually, well, for the most part, I guess I kind of recorded a lot of it in LA, so here. Um, I wrote some of it on tour, some of it in LA, and then a little bit in Toronto, too. It was kind of a little bit everywhere, but I definitely recorded like 90% of it in LA. And you, you're very vulnerable on this record. Um, you kind of put it out there. How have fans reacted to you like on social media? Do they reach out? Because um, you do connect with them in a way with the topics that you sing about. Oh, thanks. Um, they're awesome. I mean, my fans are, have always been like ones to connect with my lyrics and the things I have to say, which is amazing because that's all I've ever wanted. I never really cared for people to care about the other parts of what I do. Um, and I feel like all of my fans have been my fans for the right reasons and reasons that are way more important than, you know, a hit and stuff like that. Like, they really genuinely connect with what I have to say. And that makes me feel great because a lot of the things that I write about are things about me and my life and the pain that I've gone through. And so when somebody says, hey, like, your pain has actually been helpful to me, like, it becomes useful. And then your pain starts to become a tool in life, you know? And I think that that's the point of pain and, and confusion and frustration in life is, is to use it as a tool. And once you figure that out, I think you just become a lot happier, you know? We're very honest with, uh, with your lyrics and everything, and out of love, what can you tell us about where were you when you wrote this song, and kind of what was going on in your life? And yeah, you can make it out of love, make an applause. Yeah. Yes, come on. Heartbreak, woo, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I actually wrote this song about a friend of mine, and I know that sounds like a lie, like, it's for a friend, but it really is. Um, and he was going through a breakup, and he was like, just said one day in passing, like, hey, could you one day like write a song about somebody falling out of love with you? And I was like, oh my God, like, are you okay? And he was like, yeah, just, can you just do that? And I was like, yeah. So then I kind of had it in the back of my mind. And then a few months later, I was in the studio with Rick Knowles and I didn't really have any ideas going into it, which is really rare because I like to go into the studio prepared with stuff. But this day I was like, I don't have anything. And so I was thinking about um, that idea and I was like, let me... Let me try to write. Let me try to write from this perspective, you know. And I've I've been heartbroken before. I know we all have. So it was kind of easy to get into that mindset of when that's happened to me. Um, and then it was one of those songs that happened in like literally like 15 minutes. It was just he was playing the piano. I was just humming melodies, and like everything that came out of me ended up being the song. I actually have a recording of it. It's like a 10 minute recording of us writing it, and it's it's crazy just how it like fell out of out of me. It was like the weirdest. Thing it's amazing. You make it sound so easy. To, I know, but it's usually not that. E it's like I don't know what happened with that song. It's just one of those things that just fell out of out of me and out of him as well. Now, do, does your it's on YouTube? Uh, yeah, on YouTube. you guys can watch it on my YouTube channel, "The Making of Out of Love." Do you? Uh, does your friend now want you to write another song? Does he hit you up again? He hasn't. I think it's going well. I think they got back together actually. So oh, they okay. did. Not saying it's because of me, but I am. Because it is. <laughs> well, what about new music? Are you, are you currently writing new music? Uh, can we expect new music in the next year? Yes, you can. And what, when and what can we expect from Alessia Cara? Um, I had every intention while going into this tour to take a break for like a year. I was like, I'm, I'm tired. I need to take a chill pill for a sec. But then... I got randomly inspired out of nowhere, and I've been writing so much. <laughs> and so th those plans kind of changed, and I don't have any dates or anything yet, or I don't even know if I, when I'm going to put this stuff out, but um, I think you can probably expect it sooner than I, I had thought. <laughs> yeah. You're staying on top of it, staying busy, yeah. and can we also expect another tour after you wrap up with Shawn Mendes, <laughs> will we have the Alessia Cara headlining tour once again? I think you can, yeah. yeah. I don't know how long it's going to be, um, but I'm trying to do a U.S. thing, yeah. Very myself, nice. Yeah. <laughs> you be front row? Okay. I'm now holding I do you wanna, to it. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of amazing fans here. There are like a few that have a question you'd want to ask Alessia. Here's your chance right here. Okay, what, what is your name? Are you coming to Europe to do to your do own, my tour? own tour? I hope so. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best. I would love to, too. What part of Europe are you from? France. France? I love I love France. I love going there. I would love to. We'll see, though. I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure out the schedule. Okay, yeah, right so. here in front. Ooh, good oh. question. Thank you. He thinks I'm funny on Instagram, everyone. He, she Thank posts you. very funny videos on Instagram. So will you be doing some acting? I would love to do acting. I don't know if I'm good at it, though, because there's a difference between, like, 
posting Instagram stories and then acting. But I would love to. I, I feel like that's always been like a little side passion of mine that I want to get into. But maybe if I'm good enough, I'd be You could go to the Groundlings. Yeah. You could do some improv and learn. learn maybe, yeah. I started fun. off as a drama student, as like a drama kid in school. That was yeah. like my thing before I really got into music. So, yeah. It is. July 11th. <gasps> no way. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> An early birthday oh, present. So of course. That was oh, very that's the sweet. sweetest thing in the whole world. Thank you so much. All right. I have a question <laughs> over here in the green. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> that it doesn't say? Well, um, I guess if you want the timeline, I'll try to shorten it as, as much as possible. But basically... Um, I like wasn't one of those like viral stars on YouTube or anything like nobody really watched my stuff but um, it just so happens that the daughter of the head of my production company was b browsing through YouTube found my video um, she then was like harassing him to hit me up and he was like yeah yeah I'll watch this video later he like put me off for like months and then she finally was like did you see the video like click on this girl's video so he watched it and he was like oh my goodness wow I want to talk to her so he got in contact with me um, and I was like, uh, I didn't know if, like if I should trust them or not because I didn't know like anything about the music industry. So I was like, I don't know. Like if you want to, maybe just like give me your number and you could like talk to my dad. So then he talked to my dad. <laughs> my dad was like, I don't know. They want us to like fly to New York or something and meet with them. And we were hesitant at first, but we just like were like, okay, let's just go and see what this is about because I really wanted to do it. And then from there, um, we just started like going into the studio and writing songs. Um, and he was just like, yeah, do you want to like do this for a living? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, do you write? And I'm like, I've never really tried, maybe a little bit, but I want to start. So I started writing my own songs. And then those songs ended up being songs like Here and Scars and all of the songs that are now out um, that kind of changed my life. Um, but it took me like a year to do that and a year to actually like, well, maybe over a year to like get signed. And I started going to different labels and showing them the songs that I had. And I was like, does anybody like this stuff? Like, <laughs> and no, like some people did, some people didn't. And then finally Def Jam was the last label I met with. And they were like, we really like what you're doing. And then I signed with them. And then a long time after that, I put out here on SoundCloud. And it kind of just changed everything. Yeah, the <laughs> Did that live, answer the question? The I tried Wikipedia to shorten it. <laughs> yeah. of it. Okay, we could do a, probably a final question right up front. Well, so good, to see you. good to see you too. I could live in any TV show or movie. Man, good question. I would. Um, hmm. That's an interesting question. That's a really good question. Wow. Maybe, like, I mean, I love the show Friends. I know that's, like, everyone's, like, it's so basic. But that would be so cool if I was, like, the seventh friend, just, like, hey, next door. I just never fit in with anybody. I would love that. Um, or where else would be cool to live? Like, what's a cool movie? Like, Alice in Wonderland. Ooh, I would live, like, with the Mad Hatter and we just chill. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll look, if there's a Friends reboot, we will look for Alessia <laughs> yeah. in that. No one wants to we see can, that. Let's be real. We can expect a, a, a tour, your own tour, and the... Next year. Yes. And new music yeah. coming in soon as well. Yes. And Alessia Carr, thank you so much for coming here today, Yay! performing here at the Soka Honda Soundstage at Amp Radio Pop Up. Are you guys ready for some music? Yeah. Let's do this. Alessia Carr. Thank you. Thank you so much.